Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to create a Ghost of Tsushima inspired text disintegration effect inside of DaVinci Resolve. If you don't know about Ghost of Tsushima, it's actually a video game available on PlayStation. I've been playing this game recently and I saw this text animation whenever there is a new mission or a new chapter and really caught my eyes. So we're going to create that similar animation inside of uh, DaVinci Resolve. I've kind of already created it inside Resolve before, so this is what I ended up with. Looks pretty cool, right? I'm going to start off by going to Effects, dragging the Fusion Composition onto the Timeline, and then we can just go to the Fusion page. First thing we'll do is add in our Text Plus node. Let's view this. And I'm going to type some characters in Japanese. Uh, you won't be able to see these letters. That's because Open Science doesn't support Japanese letters. So we can switch that to MS Gothic, which is a system font. And as in the preview, I'm going to just put these characters in a new line. And again, hit enter. I'm going to add some more letters, add some dashes over here and type in some more text and hit enter again and you now add more of these lines. If you zoom in, you can see that these lines have um, gaps in between. So you can fix that by reducing the tracking and that should fix it. And now we can right click in the text field, click on character level styling, go up to modifiers and we can just select these two text at the top, increase the font size. And I can just select these letters in the middle, reduce the size on it. Now I can select these lines at the bottom and uh, increase or, or change the vertical anchor and bring them closer to the text. And I can select these two text layers again at the top and uh, change the vertical anchor. Just bring it down. I'm going to add a mask to this text. I'm actually going to add two masks to this. First one will be a rectangle mask and the other one will be a polygon mask. Since we cannot apply two masks um at once on a text node so instead what we are going to do is let's get rid of this on this text node i'm going to add in a background let's add a background node it will result in a merge node let's take a look at this merge you won't be able to see your text because on this merge you have to right click click on swap inputs and now your text will be in the foreground now on this background node, just make sure the alpha is all the way down to zero so that there is no background in it. And now you can add our first mask on this, which will be a rectangle mask on the merge node. All right, so I'm just going to increase the height and reduce the width like that and change the angle and make this 30. Cool. So now we can go to the 30th frame, create a keyframe on center X, Y, and change the position and bring it in the bottom left corner over here. Let's go to 200th frame and put it in the top right corner. All right, so if you play the animation, we have this simple wipe animation going on. And now we'll add our particles and our particles will only affect the text that is visible in this area. So let's drag in our P emitter and a P render. On the P render, I'm going to set the output mode to 2D and also check this option kill particles and this will help you in saving some of your system resources. As you can see, the P emitter doesn't have any kind of input, so we are not able to connect the merge to this, but we can go to P emitter and change the region and from the region, I'm going to select to bitmap. And now there is this input over here. So connect the merge one with the P emitter and if you just view this, P render this is what you will have in the p emitter i'm going to go to style and change the style to blob and change the size controls i'm going to increase the size and you can see your text is now visible and has particles all over it now let's add some animation to our particles so i'm going to go to controls and under velocity i'm going to set the velocity to 0 0.01 and you'll have a little bit of animation over here and you can also change the velocity variance so let's go with 007 james bond and you can just you know play this again and see what that does so we'll add some variations in the speed and on the angle i'm going to set this to 30 
like so so that our particles move in the top right direction and you can add a little bit of variance in this as well so let's go for 15. all right that is looking good now we can add more particle nodes to this so after the p emitter node and i'm going to add a p directional force and as the name suggests this will add a little bit of force to your particles and by default it adds this gravitational force you can see the particles are going in the downward direction but we can change the uh, direction you can select this node and change the direction and set this to let's go for 10 so let's play this again uh, so you can see that we have these particles moving to the right and i think the strength is too much so we'll reduce that so let's go with something uh, 0 0.150 ish and if you play this you'll have this kind of animation all right so after the p directional force we are going to add p turbulence click on add and if you check out the animation this p turbulence will add a little bit of movement in your particles and they will look much more natural you can see that they're moving in the x axis and in also in the y axis and uh, yeah you can just play around with these settings as well to get a different look but i think the default settings work just fine maybe we need to change it in the later stage and if you want to you can go to p emitter and add more of these particles by increasing the number let's go with maybe 20. all right so we have our particles but our text is not there so i'm going to bring this text over here and i'm going to connect it up with dp render and also you can right click in this area over here and turn off high quality and motion blur and that will help you a little bit in the rendering now if you take a look at this merge tool we have our text and the particles as well we need to create another mask and uh, this time we'll add the polygon mask we can add it directly to the text or you can just add it to this merge tool over here before we connect it Let's click on this polygon and create our shape this will be um, a very distorted shape so that's why we're going to use polygon so let's create a shape like this okay and uh, let's close the path and on the zero rotation i'm going to set this to 30. all right so now i want to animate this polygon one so i'm going to click on this polygon hold the control key and click on the rectangle as well so you can see both of these shapes now I'm going to go to the 30th frame where my first keyframe is created on the rectangle. I want to make sure that I'm going to create a keyframe on polygon as well. So under polygon 1, center XY, I'm going to create a keyframe. And change the position and you know match the position of these two shapes like so. Go to the 200th frame and again match the position of these two shapes like so. And now you can connect the polygon with the merge tool and uh, if you take a look at your merge tool play the animation you'll have your text you play this and should wipe away as well for the wiping off effect we can add a little bit of softness so if i just zoom in i can just go to soft edge under polygon one i'm going to increase that a little bit and you can add the polygon to the text as well over here and it should work fine but the problem is if you want to change the text and if you view the text over here um, it's kind of difficult to change the text while the polygon is connected so that's why it's much preferable to connect the polygon to the merge to itself yeah i'm happy with that result now what i want to do is i want to create a fade animation on these particles so when the particles reach the edge i want to create a fade off animation so that the particles are fading away and to do that we can go to style color controls and expand color over life controls and we have this gradient over here i'm going to click and this will add a point i'm going to move this point to the very end and from the colors over here i can just set all these values down to zero so it will be transparent and you can also go to menu over here and uncheck checker underlay so you can see your particles more clearly and you can see we have this faded particles over here and just move forward and you can see that they're still there at the edge but we can go to controls and reduce the lifespan i think 75 looks fine 
so we have this faded particles going on right that is looking good now one more thing if you zoom into your particles they are circular in shape but in the original example it's actually the leaves instead of these circle shapes so you can go to p emitter and under style you have this brush preset over here and you can change the brush type to any of these presets over here and let's create a new brush so let's uh, add in a background and on this background we are going to add in an ellipse mask as well but before that let's go to background and go to image uncheck auto resolution and i'm going to set the width and height to 50 by 50 all right and if you take a look at this background too that's how it is going to look now let's add in a rectangle mask to this and on the background too i'm going to go to color i'm going to set its color to white and on the ellipse i'm going to change the shape and make it kind of look like a leaf now you can connect this to the p emitter but there is no input again we can go to p emitter go to style and from this list we can select bitmap and now we can connect the background to to the p emitter itself all right so now if you take a look at this merge too we have all these particles in our text but as you can see the size is too big so we can go to p emitter style and under size controls we can reduce that and i'm gonna go with the default size over here so i'm gonna reset the size i think the default value looks fine so if you play this again this is how it is going to look finally what we can do is after this merge we can add in a glow effect click on add and take a look at this this is our glow let's go to the beginning you can see the glow is too much i'm going to reduce the blend amount and i'm going to also change the color but it's kind of difficult to pick the color from these three sliders as there is no uh, color picker tool over here so instead i'm going to quickly drag in a background node over here and i can just change it and pick any color from the screen let's go with this color over here and click on ok you can see the values of the red is 0 0.6 1 and 0. Point, let's round that to 0 0.5 okay 0.6 1 and 0.5 and the glow i'm going to go 0. 0.6 go for 1 and 0. 0.5 right so we have the same color applied to our glow now and you can get rid of this background and you can connect the glow with the media out now if you take a look at your final animation and play this there we have a ghost of tsushima inspired text disintegration effect i made inside da vinci resolve so yeah that is it for this video i hope this video was helpful i hope you learned something new if it did then please make sure you leave a like on this video and also subscribe to this channel thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one